Aliyu Audu is the National Youth Spokesman to Nobu Shatima Presidential Campaign Council. He joins us live from our studio in Abuja. Mr. Audu, a lot has been said about how corruption is perhaps one of Nigeria's biggest problems uh, as we head into a general election. Do you think that candidates are yielding to the kind of public scrutiny that is needed before an election? Well, I mean... Hi, good morning, Nigerians. It's um, pretty tricky when it comes to that, and um, it's because it's usually borders on, um, I mean, moral um, um, value of individuals are not necessarily legal. You know, there, there have been like a lot of corruption allegations here and there. Some rumored, some um, have been pushed forward. Um, I mean, some other people have supported their claim with some sort of evidence. I mean, you know how it is as far as there's no conviction and uh, it, it, it only remains what it is, you know, for people to be aware of the characters and, you know, people behind um, the ballots and, I mean, people on the ballots and help individuals make their decision on how to vote going into the 2023 general election. So you're saying we might have to rely on the moral value of individual candidates. You see, many of the main presidential candidates have had their fair share of corruption allegations, and all of them have denied it, uh, denied wrongdoing. Do you think it will be easy for Nigerians to decipher, to identify what the truth is as to their corruption status? Yes, it is, usually, especially when, um, I mean, the, the, the media, then um, individuals who are very informed on um, these issues are able to carry out independent um, investigation into, into um, such allegations and bring to fore facts that are, you know, um, verifiable and help others um, who do not have access to such information you know, it's our responsibility to, you know, share information as far as it is correct and um, true, share information and help the majority of, you know, electorate make decisions. Um, it's, it's the, the, the very one we, we, we've just been exposed to recently happens to be one that, um, I mean, many people who have followed the polity from 1990 to date is very aware of not just um, within the country, I mean, there, there has been linked to some sort of um, um, personnel, you know, some public officials in, in, in the United States who, by one link or another, it's connected to this. And when you look at this particular case, and you, you can see some sort of connection, there's, there's similarity in the way and manner the corruption of the convicted congressman in America back in 2009, I think that was when the convict, I think investigation started in 2005, and he was finally convicted in 2009. And uh, the, con the, the conviction, the, the similarity, and the, the link with what out there currently points us in the direction that there's a lot of truth. As much as I personally would not, you know, support the way and manner in which um, a former employee or associate or a subordinate, whatever way to put it, you know, there's something unethical about how this is coming out, but we can't run away from the truth contained in it. So you probably are talking about um, the issue with the PDP presidential candidate. Your, your party has asked him to come out clean on two issues, one of which is the um, his health status and the audio clip released by someone who has called himself his former aide, revealing how he allegedly colluded with his former boss to use government money via the special purpose vehicle to fund political activities. You know that some will say confessions like these are the handiworks of... Um, uh, politicians, a politically motivated attempt to discredit um, the opponent, and that some would say your party is complicit. I mean, we have been at the receiving side of um, such thing in the past, but when, when, when you look at the documents and um, 
in, in the two cases and investigate um, clean and clear mind, you are able to relate with um, a particular one. I mean, this fellow who has come out with this, you know, um, audio has gone ahead to swear to an affidavit, you know, but, I mean, his, his confidence to go ahead and swear to an affidavit shows how convinced he is about what he's saying. And I have listened to the audio um, recording, and I can confirm that it's the voice of the, the um, presidential candidate of the PDP. And um, the, the names mentioned are familiar names in Nigerian polity. And if we follow the, the congressman, Jefferson case of 2000 investigation that you know led to his um, conviction in 2009, and the fact that even in that conviction, you know it was mentioned that um, the country. Then the link with the spouse of such an official, even though the official, the Nigerian official, wasn't named. I mean there was. A link to, I mean, there was a link to a spouse of such official that resided in the United States of America. When you put all of this together and realize that in the statement, in the court statement in, in that investigation, it was equally revealed that the corruption was done via SPVs. It, was, it, was, it, was, it wasn't an open corruption, but corruption by stealth. You know, it, it's the it's same style. The, the individuals involved are linked, and clearly, because of the way and manner the, the, the person involved went about it, the, his principal at the time, whose open convention on the character of these individuals equally supports this. You know, I mean, it shows clearly that the principal knew so much about it, but could not do anything about it because, I mean, he was, whether he, with his, by his, I mean, with his, um, how do I even put it? Intention, whether it's intentional on his part, it's, it's somehow connected, or he was somehow connected to it, and there was no way he was going to take legal action on the individual without indicting himself, you know, which led to a lot of political instability at that time. I mean, it, it, it has really had a very huge negative impact on our governance from then till date, if we are being honest, because there are a lot of individuals who have been fingered in this allegation, and it brought to light, I mean, it brought some sort of clarity to how, why certain political decisions were taken by the then um, leader of the country, and how it set us back as a nation in terms of development, you know, in terms of not being able to come through with, you know, um, a lot of steps taken by the government to, to fight corruption because the people who were supposed to fight were one way or another very involved in it. So it's interesting what the position of the APC has been. I, I'm going to quote the director of media of your party's presidential campaign council who had said that if Atiku had some modicum of honor, he ought to have stepped down from the presidential race that he is bound to lose again. You know, have you wondered if the APC is willing to be measured by the same standard it's seeking from others? Because um, your presidential candidate has also, like you said earlier, uh, has um, a litany of, of accusations. Um, has your party shown example, a standard, you know, as to how other parties should follow when these allegations come up? All right. As... as as um, similar as the two cases are, yes, I agree that, um, I mean, what's good for the goose is equally good for, for the gander. And, but when you look at the two scenarios, they're a bit different because in this case, there is not, I mean, the, the, the presidential candidate of, DP, of for the PDP would have to come out to tell us, you know, I have listened to the audio. We all have, there's no, I don't think anyone in this country will listen to that audio and have doubt as to the authenticity of it. Yes, we can have issues about how the audio came about, but that's his voice. That's, that's a very serious allegation. That's a very serious indictment 
while I do not think there is a legal ground for um, anyone to, to, to pull him down, it is honorable, it is expectedly honorable of such a person about we live in a country where everything is almost politically sponsored in the eyes of every other person. So it is your responsibility, you know, to come out and clear your name. You have, you have your voice out there. You have mentioned people. You have related to um, scenarios that we are all, you know, very aware of. Let's go back to the, the, the uh, political fund scandal, the one that led to a former governor being in prison. You know, the other people. In, in the court statement, you know, it is said somewhere that the former president returned his own share of it. And what the, the, the presidential candidate has only said in this video, it, it, in the audio recorded, even that there was no corruption, what he basically said is, it can't be traced to me. I did this, I did it, but it cannot be traced to me. And he gave reason why it cannot be traced to me. And he, he equally said that it was even on his own advisor, his then principal, he advised his then principal to not do open corruption. I mean, he, he, he did in any way that did you kick against corruption. He only kicked against it being open. So as far as you can be corrupt and be discreet about it, that this gives us the, 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 the clarity as to the confidence he's always had that nothing can be traced to him because he's been a corruption by self. You know, he set up special purpose vehicles to that, that to take funds from the public coffers for personal businesses, for, 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 for political running. I do not think there is a problem with having people, uh, having political parties raise funds. No, that is how a political party is supposed to be managed. You have your party members, you have supporters, you have other allies in the business who should come and you know, donate to how party is run. That is, that is supposed to be normal, that is supposed to be open, that is supposed to be you know, um, legal. But in a case where you said you set up a company to take funds from public offers to run a party, it's, it's, it's corruption. You know, if everything you have done is to not stop the corruption, but to just make sure you are able to do it without being caught in it, then we have evidence out there. It is always going to generate a um, you know, reaction. And for our, for our own campaign council, just like... Um, we would expect for anyone, any other campaign council, we are saying, we are not even, I mean, campaign that is one thing, come out clean on this, tell us, I mean, we can hear your voice, these are the things you said, I, I really do not think that it is very, um, it is expected of such candidate to stand in front of any group of people and ask them to vote for him, having your, when you have your voice out there, saying this, and we all agree that corruption is number one, problem we have faced in our country since, I mean, for decades. It's, it's, it's still a cancer we're trying to find a way. I mean, we can't totally eradicate it, but we give it to the DLS minimum. But, so right. Mr. Audi, I, I, I see that you're drawing, you're talking about the moral angle to this and how it makes a presidential candidate look. Aliyu Aldu is a national youth spokesman to Nobu Shatima Presidential Campaign Council. He joins me live from our studio in Abuja. He's also raised the issue of an audio leak uh, involving the former vice president and PDP presidential candidate alleging uh, his use of a special purpose vehicle to fund political activities. Mr. Aldu, thank you for staying the course on the program. Uh, so you talked about the former governor. You recall that in this particular audio leak that we're talking about, the PDP presidential candidate was alleged to have admitted to collect 100 billion naira from one um, Joshua Dari, a former Plateau State governor, who, uh, which was paid directly to Marine Float. Now, Daria was convicted and jailed for criminal misappropriation. Recall that happening, and um, the, there was a criminal breach of trust. It was found to have looted two billion naira in public funds during his time as governor between 1999 and 2007. But the same Daria was one of the two former governors that were pardoned by the incumbent uh, administration. Uh, there are some who saw that as an act of a huge rollback on the gains in the fight against corruption. How do you react to that? Um, 
In all honesty, I, 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 I agree with the, with, with, with the position of um, such people, and I, I hold that position myself, but um, I, mean, I, I, I believe the um, government of President Muhammad Buhari, our government, um, are not privy to um, reasons as to why that pardon was given. I mean, it was within the powers of the president to give that power, and he did that. And he, he, he probably had his reasons for doing that. Yes, I do agree that we will not be doing the fight against corruption any justice or any good. We continue to um, make it seem like people can be caught, you know, convicted, be set free. We are not, we're not setting you know, the right tone for people to actually know the implication of so, um, abusing public offices, especially you know, having some financial um, advantage you know, at, the, at the expense of the nation. 